Greetings. My name is Michael Ellerbeck, and today we will be talking about the differences between security groups and network ACLs. The first thing to get firmly in your mind is where these virtual firewalls operate at. In the case of network ACLs, they operate at the subnet level. In the case of security groups, they operate at the individual instance level. Next, let's observe how they work together. They operate in layers. When traffic is coming in, it is routed using the routing tables to the subnet. The rules of the network ACL for that subnet control which traffic is allowed to that subnet. The rules of the security group that is associated with an instance controls access to that instance. You can secure your instances using only security groups. However, you can add network ACLs as an additional layer of defense. Another differentiator between network ACLs and security groups is how the rules are processed. With a network ACL, they are evaluated starting with the lowest numbered rule. As soon as a rule matches, it's applied, regardless of any higher number rule that might contradict it. Let's do a quick example. Say you had some rules. You had rule 100, which was for port 80, and it would allow from any address. And then you had rule 110, which would allow port 443 from any address. And then you always have a star rule deny at the end, which you are not allowed to modify. Say you have a packet coming in and it was destined for 443. It doesn't match rule 100, but it does match rule 110, which allows that packet into the subnet. If the packet was going to say port 22, it doesn't match any of the rules, so it will hit the star deny at the end. Security groups, on the other hand, don't have this kind of numbered approach. With security groups, all the rules are evaluated before deciding whether traffic is allowed. When multiple security groups are associated with an instance, the rules are aggregated to create one set of rules. If there is more than one rule for a specific port, it will apply the most permissive rule. So, for example, if you had a security group that allows access to port 22 from IP 1234, and you had another security group that allows access to port 22 from everyone, in that case, everyone would have access to port 22. Another difference to be aware of is whether you are able to have a deny rule. With a network ACL, it supports both allow and deny rules. With security groups, it supports allow rules only. Another concept to be familiar with is whether the virtual firewall is stateful or stateless. A net network ACL is stateless, which means that responses to allowed inbound traffic are subject to the rules for outbound traffic and vice versa. So, return traffic must be explicitly allowed by the rules. With security groups, they are stateful, which means return traffic is automatically allowed, regardless of any rules. One final key element is how these virtual firewalls will be applied. With a network ACL, they will automatically apply to all instances in the subnet that it's associated with. So it provides an additional layer of defense if the security group rules are too permissive. With security groups, they're applied to an instance only if someone specifies the security group when launching the instance or associates the security group with the instance later on, something to watch out for. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of the key concepts and differences between network ACLs and security groups.